We are continuing to look ahead to the 2024 college football season. Our stop today is Springfield, Missouri, and it is a privilege to get to visit with Coach Chuck Keppela, who is the head football coach at Evangel. Coach, again, a privilege to have you on today. I know you are in the middle of spring football practices right now and busy time of year, so tell us where you are in the spring. Yeah, thanks for for having me on and and being able to promote Evangel football and and uh, yeah, we're at the tail end of spring. I've got uh, three practices this week. We actually practice today, and then we'll uh, we'll watch film on Tuesday, and then have a team meeting. Uh, we'll have a practice on Wednesday, and then we finish with our spring game on Thursday night, seven o'clock. All right. Well, that 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 sounds like it's a busy schedule, but it I- is a busy schedule. It is a busy schedule, and then just uh, then we start exit interviews on Friday. So you know we always sit down with every player that's that's on our team at the end of the season in the fall, and then we sit down with them at the end of the season in the spring, let them know kind of where they're at, you know, and and check their grades, and and uh, man, we just talk about what they're going to do in the summer. So it's a it's a you know it's it's a good time to be able to sit down and kind of chat with them one on one. After not having spring games and, and spring practices two or three years ago, is is it something that you look at you just don't take for granted anymore? You know, are you, ta- are you talking about kind of during the COVID time? Sure. Yeah. Well, fortunately, I haven't really been able to have to miss any of those. Uh, except, well, I take that back. The, the the 2020 year when that that did that was that was tough. But the following year we did. Um, but what we ended up doing is we ended up having a bunch of Zoom meetings. I mean, I you know figured out more about Zoom and Teams and all these different uh, you know things that I'd never heard of before. And uh, so I'm not going to say we've mastered those things, but we were on there enough to be able to have staff meetings and, and position meetings and offense and defensive meetings and special teams meetings. And we just made made good with what we could do uh, back in the day. But yeah, we don't ever take it for granted. I'm I'm very thankful. Uh, to be able to uh, coach for a living and do it at a great institution like Evangel University. Well, Coach, the the university, the athletic department, makes the move from the heart to the KCAC. So last year you all had your first season in the KCAC and really made some noise, made it all the way through undefeated and a playoff appearance as well. 11-1 season in 2023. Talk about that. Yeah, you know, it was a historic season for us. Um, you know, we've been fortunate over the years to to be pretty successful in the heart. We, we, uh, in fact, uh, goodness gracious, I would say I'm going to, I'm going to three of the last five years, I think it was three of the last five years, we played the last week of the season to win a conference championship. And um, I think it might even be more than that, honestly, um, win a conference championship and, and earn a playoff berth. We were able to win one conference championship and, and uh, then we transitioned into uh you know the KCAC. I'm fortunate enough we were able to to uh, finish the the regular season undefeated and win a conference championship there. So we've been fortunate as a staff to be able to win a championship in both conferences. And so, um, but you know, it, it was fun to be able to enter that conference in the first year and be able to do that. And so, I was just really proud of our kids and our coaching staff and our support staff and and really the time and effort that was put in uh, throughout the year. There were a lot of games I'm sure that that you look back on and, and we could talk about right now. But I want to talk about one in particular, the game against Bethel. So much on the line in that game, uh, uh, just a, a fantastic finish. Double overtime win, 41-38. I, I know there were so many ups and downs, I'm sure, for you. Talk about that one in particular. Yeah, you know, interesting game. It's, it's one that will kind of go down in your mind. You know, we were down 21 and I believe it was even down to four minutes left in the game where we're down 21 and was able to uh, fortunately pull that out. My brother uh, was in town watching the game, and, and the very next morning uh, he was on our porch and he had his, his computer on. And I was like, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm watching the game again and the end of it. And I looked at him and I said, well, did we win? <laughs> because, you know, because he was at that point of the game where I was like, man, when you look at it, it's – it's um, you know, it was just one of those epic games that you'll always remember. Um, really, some players stepped up in the end. Um, you know, R.J. Wakely, you know, hit Dylan Hester, you know, be able to take the thing into uh, overtime and, you know, win win the ball game. And it's, uh, you know, it's just something we'll, we'll never, ever forget. And uh, just the excitement of our players to be able to end the, 
regular season and then guaranteed us to be able to get in the playoffs. I think um, if we would have lost that game, I still think we would have been in the playoffs, but but that really just sealed the deal and made sure that we were in and didn't have to help get a help from anybody else. Yeah, I, I was wondering about that too. I mean, it, it I felt like you probably would be, but you know, you all were undefeated and wound up playing your first game in the playoffs on the road. So I yep. know nobody in Kansas City has act, asked my opinion about that, um, and that's probably never going to happen. But that would have been one of the things about the playoffs I, w- I would have have thought about. You know, with the undefeated record, you still go on the road, uh, take on a very tough uh, basketball team too. But uh, with that in mind, though, and by the way, we're visiting with Chuck Hepla here, the AFCA Region 3 Coach of the Year in the NAIA for 22, or 23, 2023. Coach, there's um, we, we talk about the spring, and there one of the big things about the spring is back in February signing day. You all signed nearly 50 recruits coming in. Yeah, and that really wasn't the intention. It was just one of those years that, um, you know, I mean, obviously we didn't really need to sign that many, but there was a lot of interest in Evangel and, and um, you know, what we've been fortunate to be able to do over the years as a staff and, We've got a new uh, building being built across from where I'm sitting right now. So you're interviewing in my office, but if you interview me a year from now, uh, I'll be in a totally different office. In fact, it'll be less than a year, but, um, you know, so we've got a new Valor Center that's being built, and then eventually they'll they'll build an on-campus stadium for us. And so, um, you know, I think there was just some interest in our program, and, and uh, so and we were able to attract some really, really good kids, some really, really uh, good football players, and so – it just it just worked out well, and so really proud of the the class that we have coming in, and and the coaches and their involvement and all that, and and just thankful, very thankful. You know, I've I've been up there, coach, on campus, and and I've met you when I've stopped by, but I've been on the site. Is it the Valor Center? Is that what mm-hmm. it's called? Yep. I've been on the site of the the upcoming Valor Center, and it looks like it's going to be someplace fantastic, like the campus too, as well, coach. It's it's a great university. I, yeah, it's a beautiful campus, and the Valor Center is just going to – it's its its really a, an area that is needed. Um, you know, we're going to have new offices, new weight room, new locker room. Uh, really, our offices will be an office-slash-meeting room. We'll have a big 150-seat uh, meeting meeting room and then another smaller 30-seat meeting room, and then there's new basketball and, and all that stuff. But for us personally, uh, you know, the weight room, the training room, the – you know, the locker room and our offices and so forth will just be huge. And it'll overlook the uh, our current stadium that we actually practice on. They do play soccer games there, but uh, we don't have the infrastructure right now to play a home game there. And so uh, we've been playing, obviously, at Nixa, but very proud of that, too, because I think we were third in the nation in attendance, average attendance, and fifth in the nation in total attendance. And people are driving 30 minutes away to watch us play. And so, so really proud of that. Coach, let's look ahead just a little bit. I know there are a number of players coming back. I'll start with the defensive side of the ball. You all just made a lot of noise on defense last year, and it was really the effort the defense put up was fantastic. Not to take away from the offense, we'll get to that in a moment, but really it was it was a team that seemed to be, from this perspective, uh, predicated on defense. And you have two first-team All-Americans in, in Bradley Myers and Zach Myers that are coming back to this year's team yep. as well, linebacker, defensive line uh, respectively between the two and Brad Myers a ridiculous 151 tackles in the season in 12 games that is a phenomenal number talk about your defense yeah you know our defense is led by coach Jeremy DeSoto and, and in the conference um, you know you had mentioned the coach of the year thing well he was assistant coach of the year in our conference and so has done an outstanding job over the years and and uh, I remember higher you know when I took over the head coaching role here and hired him as a coordinator. So he's, he's been the defense coordinator here since I've been the head coach here. Just does an outstanding job of getting those guys ready to go. And, and uh, but yeah, you talk about Bradley, you know, Bradley led the country in tackles. And uh, I mean, you do the math on that 150 something tackles, 11 games. I mean, you know, he's, he's averaging double digits a game and uh, tackles and that's a lot. And, uh, and then obviously his brother at the defensive end position, it's his younger brother. And, uh, you know, he's an All-American for us. And, and first of all, they're great kids. They're also great leaders, uh, great, just godly men. And then just get out on the field and, and play hard. And, and uh, so they're just a small portion of the guys on defense. I mean, we return 
the entire secondary back there. And we even got a couple of guys that, that got hurt that played. So, so we got starters returning them back up. So it really uh, will place a linebacker. We'll have um, a couple of D line, we'll have quite a few D linemen that played, but um, obviously Zach and, and Kyra Warner on the other side and, and uh, Demar- you know, Demarius Reynolds in the middle and some guys like that. So we've got quite a few guys that are returning and, and uh, just a good, good group of young men. Coach, I, again, I don't want to say anything to neglect the offense. Uh, the defense stood out to me a lot just following through the season, but the offense was able to put some points up. I know one place in particular we're going to see at least a, a new name or, or a name that wasn't uh, as featured as prominently as R.J. Wakely was last year as he's moving on. So uh, you have uh, folks there. What's the competition like there at the quarterback position, and who else might we might see uh, that he would receive the ball from? Yeah, you know, we've got four young men, you know, right now on campus that are competing uh, for the job here in the spring. And then we've also signed some young men that are coming in. And so so there'll be good competition for that. And, and obviously that's that's a big uh, area that's got to get, you know, got to get replaced. And, and uh, you know, you need that signal caller that's a leader and can lead your, your program and, and lead your team. And whether they want to be a leader or not, doesn't matter. They're going to be because if you play that position, you're the natural leader. Uh, yeah, you know, offensively last year, I think we ended up averaging during the regular season over 30 points a game. And and uh, so so Coach uh, David Flores, and he's our offense coordinator, and then Coach Cody Wells is our co-offensive coordinator. And those guys have done a really good job of putting our guys in, in the right position to be successful. And, and uh, man, we return a lot of those guys. We return uh, running backs that played, receivers that played, um, um, you know, offensive line that played. Uh, we just got to replace the quarterback position, which is a big deal. But uh, I think our guys uh, will, will be all right there. Well, Coach, I know that, that uh, you oversee it all, but you also uh, have your hands specifically in special teams as well. Uh, talk about that area of the game, and it shouldn't be left out. Yeah, special teams is something that we heavily emphasize around here. If you look at uh, – any football game, there's 30 to 35 special teams plays that are played literally every game on average. And uh, so if you're not emphasizing that, you're just eliminating 30 to 35 plays that are pretty important uh, during the game. So you really need to focus on that. But we return, you know, our, our starting punter, our starting kicker, our starting uh, uh, snapper, short snapper and long snapper. So so we feel pretty good about that, uh, returning a lot of those guys. And and then, um, you know, a lot of those guys that we just mentioned that are on the defensive side and the offensive side, they're going to play a, a heavy role in the special teams, whether it be kickoff, kickoff return, punt, punt block, you know, obviously PAT, PAT field goal block. You know, we blocked a lot of kicks over the years. We've uh, returned uh, quite a few, you know, over the years. And, and uh, so we're proud of, pr- proud of the special team side of it. And, Hopefully that will continue to be special because it's called special things for a reason. So, I'll remember that I, I, and may use that in the future. Might give you credit, too. So well, I'll, I'll take it. I'll <laughs> take it. <laughs> uh, I, coach, you're heading into your ninth year as the head coach there at Evangel, and, and I know there, as you were talking about earlier, there have been some great seasons. Um, it's going to be, I think, an, an interesting to have an encore season of what you did last year. Obviously, go a little bit farther in the playoffs. Uh, a big deal, but it's not that far away. And the season opener is on the road at Salina uh, against Kansas Wesleyan. And I'm sure that the the Wildcats haven't forgotten the 17-7 game to open the season last year. You all won that one in Nixa. Uh, and then, of course, on the on home, excuse me, the, the first home game will be against Tabor. That'll be September 7th. That will be in Nixa as well. Can you talk about the upcoming season? For what yeah. was four months out? Yeah, we're, we're looking forward to it. Of course, we've got uh, spring ball to finish up and some summer lifting for our guys and, and then obviously fall camp. And, and you know, after fall camp, then we get into the regular season. And, yeah, so, you know, really a, a tough opener. I would say uh, Kansas Wesleyan would probably say the same thing. You know, both teams are have been traditionally uh, good over the years. And so really good opener for both of us. And, and uh, you know, they're a well-coached team and, and got really good athletes. And so – It'll be interesting now this side of this season going to some places that we haven't been to yet. So, um, you know, I've been to obviously the, the ones we went on the road last year, but uh, we've got some schools this year that will go to their place and kind of see what that's like. But then we've got some schools coming to, to our place and kind of checking checking out what ours is like. And so, so yeah, it'll be, it'll be another um, kind of a new, some new things for us. And so what our guys are experienced, of course, when I was in the heart, we could pretty much tell you what every locker room was going to be like, where we're going to stay, all that kind of stuff. And 
So now there's some newness to it, but that also generates some excitement. So uh, looking forward to how our kids handle it and how our program handles it. Well, Coach, success to you all to the Valor this season. I appreciate you taking time with us today. Again, Coach Chuck Heppola in, coming into his ninth year as the head coach there for the Evangel. Now Valor, used to be Crusaders, now now Valor. And uh, we, we're we looking forward to watching you as well. And I know that uh, there is an excitement building off in an 11-1 and year, and we look forward to seeing how you follow that. I appreciate it. Thank you for having us. 